Hey, for this video, I wanted to showcase a few more of the things that I picked up out of that collection in New York City. While these aren't necessarily the best uh, items in the collection that I got, they do, I think, represent the collection as a whole, kind of showcasing everything from sort of period antiques to just folk art to outsider art to objects as art. And while they aren't the most expensive items I got, I think these items represent a lot of bang for the buck. This, a little more traditional piece of folk art, it's a... Uh, carved hourglass figure, odd fellows. So you look at completed auctions, you see some of these selling for, you know, 1200 1000 and up. This one, maybe not quite as good as those, but certainly a lot better than the uh, three to $400 examples you see for sale or selling in auctions. Really nice example. Great paint on it, great surface on it. I think a good bang for the buck, I've priced it um, considerably less than I think it would have brought in one of the catalog auctions a good deal for someone looking for one. This this carving, pretty neat carving just on its own. Probably missing a shovel, but signed on the back, Aaron Beinman, uh, neat, neat guy, World War II veteran, uh, carpenter, union organizer, and a professor and chair of the Department of Sociology at State University of New York in New Paltz. Created a lot of these, a lot of these car figures, some of which were displayed on campus and in uh, other places in and around New York but really neat. Um, it's just one of those things that I think the carving speaks for itself, but then you add in the history of the, of the carver and it just really, I think, puts it over the top. And again, not a lot of money. Uh, probably, probably be had for three, $400, a lot of his work, even less. And it seems like a good deal for a, a known folk artist with a pretty neat, neat backstory to him. Another piece in the collection, nude woman. I've always had good luck buying and selling nude women. Um, I try to stick to ones that either look really accurate or really inaccurate. Uh, a lot of folk art, a lot of naive naive, naive pieces. Um, new carvings are always popular. And uh, this one I think is a, it's a pretty decent one and wouldn't be a lot of money either compared to some of the ones in, other ones on the market. Production piece, cast iron. But one of those things that I think once you mount it, it really does show how uh, found objects is art kind of thing. Not to be too pretentious, um, but yeah, really cool thing. I was sort of starting to get into this before I even got into this collection, selling a lot of things. I bought a bunch of mounts. I had a bunch of mount mounts made and I was mounting objects, but uh, this piece is really cool. It looked great on the shelf. The cool thing about these is it works with uh, whether you have period antiques or industrial stuff or even uh, modern kind of decorator look. It fits with all that stuff, which is a really cool thing. It's always good when stuff kind of flows across different uh, genres of collecting. Finally, I got this carved head. Um, really like this one. It's got a little bit of paint remnants, S uh, a really detailed carving, a lot going on for it. I really like its size. Like this head, I really like too, but you look how much smaller it is. This thing on, on a shelf, this thing has a lot of presence, and that's what I tend to look for too with folk art. It, you know, if you put it on a shelf, does it stand out? Is it noticeable? If you have a, too many things, does it get buried? Or is it so good or so interesting looking that it stands out no matter how many things you have on a shelf? I think this is one of those pieces. This piece is a little bit smaller. Um, pottery, really neat. Guy's neck is craning. But it's not going to pop on a shelf full of things. But if you had this a little more of a solo setting, it really looks nice. And so you got to consider that when you're decorating or how much you're buying is that how crammed your area is going to be and what stands out and what doesn't. Really cool. Definitely worth buying. This though, this works with no matter how much stuff you have. I think it's going to pop just because of the size. Anyway, a closer look at a few of the items I got out of that collection in New York City. Really cool stuff, I think, for the most part. And a lot of it is very affordable. You're not looking at stuff that's thousands of dollars. Yeah, granted, it's not all 50, but uh, a lot of it is affordable. A lot of good stuff you can either build a collection around or fit into your current collection. Anyway, um... Thanks for watching and look for my future videos where I display some more stuff from this collection maybe or some cool stuff I find on the road. Anyway, thanks.